So growing up, my childhood best friend was named Zach. And Zach and I were inseparable, always trying to hang out with each other, and we remain really close friends up to this day. And I was always trying to convince my parents to go over to Zach's house because Zach always had way better video games than I did. Zach always had the latest console, he always had the most up-to-date, coolest version of every game, and so I was always trying to get over to his place. But there was one game that I had that Zach didn't have. There was one edge that I had in this marketplace, and that was called Sky Kid. Now, Sky Kid, as you can probably tell from the amazing HD graphics of this game, <laughs> like, look at those pixels. This is one of those old arcade games, one of those fossilized uh, games of history along the lines of Pac-Man or Galaga. Some of you maybe remember those. Some of you maybe played them in arcades. But I had this on my GameCube system, and for some reason, Zach and I loved this game, and we would play it for hours when our parents would let us. It was a very simple game. One of us would be the red plane, one of us would be the blue plane, and you were basically flying on this mission to go and bomb a target at the end of the map. And as you were flying there, you were being attacked by enemy fighter jets, there was you know, anti-aircraft guns on the bottom that were trying to take you down, uh, you had to fly over mountains, you had to dodge bridges. Basically, you were getting shot at from every single angle. It was a nightmare out there. But if your plane sustained enough damage, you would begin to go into a tailspin. You'd start to fall, and it was at this point that you and your buddy had to both hammer on the health button as much as possible to try and revive your engine to pull up and continue on the mission. And if you revived your plane, that was one of the most exhilarating moments of your life, right? So Zach and I would be screaming at the screen, trying to pull up, trying to revive this engine, or at the very least, we would be like whisper screaming at the screen because my parents thought we were in bed, and instead we were playing Sky Kid. Now, today we're starting a new series, a new preaching series called Revive, not because we want to revive Sky Kid planes, but because here at St. Benedict Parish, we believe that we have a role in reviving the priesthood. And if you don't know what the word revive means, by the way, it just means bring something back to life, bring newness of life. And so we see us having a major role in reviving the priesthood because a lot of priests in the church are struggling right now. There was a survey done recently by a group called The Catholic Project, and they found that in their interviews of over 10,000 American priests, that priests were not doing so well. They found that 45% of them, that's almost half, were experiencing at least one symptom of ministry burnout, and many of them were experiencing far more. And this was coming because of a lot of different reasons. It was like these priests were being shot at from all these different angles. A lot of the priests reported that they were feeling overwhelmed, overworked, not able to keep up with the busyness of the parish because as the number of priests goes down, the number of work stays the same. And I can just tell you that one of my classmates when I was uh, leaving seminary, one of the classmates who was ordained with me, he was talking about how it was not uncommon in his diocese for a brand new priest, fresh out of seminary, to be assigned a whole parish to look after by himself. Can you imagine coming right out of school and being like, okay, here's your parish. But he then go, went on to say that it was not unlikely that a fresh priest right out of seminary would be given up to three parishes to run all by himself, which is not sustainable at all. A lot of priests also suffer from isolation. They don't get married, so they don't live with families, and many of them don't even live with other priests, and so they find themselves very lonely and feeling profoundly isolated from others because they're not able to talk about their experiences of priesthood. And then on top of this, many priests are experiencing spiritual dryness because they're so overworked at the parish, they're so busy, they feel so isolated that they don't think that they have enough time to prioritize their relationship with God. They stop praying, and as a result of that spiritual dryness, it's like this, this pit that just keeps taking them further down. And then as the cherry on top of this, this cake of priest burnout 
is the fact that in many seminaries, most priests don't get much leadership training. So they aren't taught how to actually manage a parish, the nuts and bolts of what it takes to equip and lead a team. They know maybe a lot about scripture, a lot about theology, a lot about the faith, which is, of course, very necessary, but they aren't being trained to be leaders. And so, ultimately, this is leading to basically a recipe for disaster. And you didn't have to tell me about this study to know this, right? From the time I was a kid, many of the priests that I knew were struggling, and I'm sure you've heard the stories as well. Priests that have had to take time off because of stress leave. Priests that have actually walked away from the priesthood altogether and just said, I can't take this anymore. Priests that have turned to alcoholism or other destructive behaviors because they just can't cope with with what's going on. Now, I don't want you to all be afraid and, and think that this is like a desperate cry for help on my behalf. Like, this isn't some runaround way to say, I'm on my last rope, guys. Like, someone help me. Uh, I'm actually doing very well. I'm, I'm very happy, as happy as I can be, living with, you know, Father Dan and Father Simon. <laughs> Maybe I am hanging on a thread. We'll see. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. And I also don't want this to, to come across as a judgment on priests that are struggling. Because I don't know all the stuff that's going on in their life. None of us do. But I think objectively we can look around at the priesthood and see that there is a crisis going on, that it needs some revival, it needs some new life brought into it. Because God's plan for leadership in the church is ultimately not one of defeat. It's not one of disillusionment. It's not one of burnout. Rather, when Jesus gives authority in his church, he does so in a way that it is built on a strong foundation that cannot be moved. When Jesus calls Peter to be the first pope, the one who will lead the church on God's behalf, he tells him, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Those are strong words. He says, Peter On this rock, I will build my church. When I think of rock, I think of something that's hard, something that's not going to crack under pressure, something that's firm, that's put in place, that's steady. And Jesus says, Hades will not prevail. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. No matter what the world throws at Peter, the church will not fail under his leadership. This is Jesus' vision. This is Jesus' entrustment that he's giving to Peter. He says, I will give you keys to the kingdom of heaven, symbolizing that this authority, the power to lock and unlock in the kingdom of God, is being given to Peter never to be wrested from him, never to be taken away. And so we see that when God entrusts someone with leadership, his vision is that he'll be firmly established, that he won't be taken out. And yet if this is God's vision, why do we see on the ground Good men who entered into the priesthood with a lot of hope, a lot of zeal, doing the exact opposite, being taken out of ministry, becoming burnt out, becoming isolated, overworked, spiritually dry, and unable to show good leadership. Well, what can we do as a parish to revive the priesthood, to in some way address this crisis of leadership going on? Well, when I was discerning, I noticed a lot of these trends in the priesthood. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I felt called to join the Companions of the Cross. Because Father Bob Bedard, who founded the Companions of the Cross, he had this vision of reviving the priesthood so that the church as a whole could come explosively alive. Because revival in the priesthood means that there will necessarily flow revival in the church. And Father Bob saw a lot of these unhealthy trends taking place in priests. A lot of the priests that he knew were isolated, were overworked, weren't prioritizing their relationship with God. And so he founded the Companions of the Cross as one of the solutions to address this. And he was very clear to us as priests, you will live together. You will pray together. You will encourage and support each other. This is not an option. You will continually surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus. You will never let anything wrest you away from that first love that you have for the Lord. You will remain spiritually strong. 
And you will learn to work alongside not only just your other priests, but learn how to lead as a team. Learn how to empower the people in your parish to go forward on mission for the church. And this was a very attractive vision for me. This was the kind of priest that I wanted to be. And I met a lot of Companions of the Cross priests who seemed happy, who seemed healthy, and who seemed holy, which is what we want in our priests, right? Amen? So as a, as a companion priest, I was coming to this parish, and I found myself so easily integrating into the community here because here at St. Benedict, there's a real focus on training priests on how to be good leaders, right? This is why we constantly have new seminarians coming to our parish, new deacons, new priests that come to experience a thriving parish community that come to experience priesthood that's lived out in a healthy way so that they can leave here encouraged in their own vocation, strengthened, and with new tools to be leaders in their own right. And St. Benedict Parish is part of this work of reviving the priesthood. And I think a really clear example of that is the fact that Father Dan and I were sent here as new priests because there's a lot of parishes out there, I'm sure, that would benefit from having a priest. And if we were just going out to plug holes, they would have sent Father Dan somewhere and me somewhere and kept Father Simon right here. But that was not what they did because there was an intentional plan to put two new priests in a revived, awesome, vibrant parish with a seasoned pastor who can coach us on how to become the leaders that God has called us to be. It was a very intentional choice on that part. And we, as a parish, want to, be a continue, want to continue to be a place where the priesthood is being revived. Now, next week, Father Simon is going to give us some more concrete information on how we can respond to the crisis in the priesthood, how we can be a part of reviving the priesthood. So I won't steal his thunder. He'll talk about that next week. But this week, what I want to focus on is prayer. I want to focus on asking you to pray for this revival in the priesthood because nothing we do here will ever go very far unless it starts with prayer. Prayer is not just sending good vibes into the universe. Prayer is not sending good thoughts or, or nice wishes. Prayer is direct communication with God himself, the creator of all things, the one who wants to revive the priesthood more than we do. And so when we pray, we are entering into relationship with him and asking for his help. And I want you to especially pray for these two intentions. First, I, I would love for you to pray for priests that are struggling. Priests that are feeling worn out. Priests that are feeling discouraged. Priests that might even be considering walking away from it all. Doubting that they were even called in the first place. Pray for these priests. And then, in a selfish way, I, I want you to pray for new priests as well. I want you to pray for priests like myself, Father Dan, all of our classmates, all these new guys who are going out into ministry, that we would never forget our first love for the Lord, that we would learn how to be the leaders that God is calling us to be, and that we would persevere in the ministry. And I believe that if we begin with prayer, and if we continue to learn more about how we can revive the priesthood here at our parish, then things will begin to change. Because we want to help priests get connected so that they're not ministering on their own, but that they're learning how to work with others, learning how to work as a team, to mobilize their lay people to take the mission of the parish forward. We want to be a part of reviving the culture in the church so that priests can have deep relationships with God, that they would never sacrifice prayer for the sake of busyness, but that they would always be operating, not in their own power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray for that. Let's pray for a revival in the priesthood, a revival in the church, so that we can have priests that are truly happy, truly healthy, and above all, holy.